hey John here you know I'm not really big on going back and fixing stuff up I just like to just keep on adding 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 content to my site that's just how I am I love hitting that publish new content out there I just get this feeling like just more opportunity more chance for growth but the reality is the way things work with websites or with Google and all that is often it's well worth your time and money to go back and fix up old content really there are two instances when you would do that the first would be if it's content that's just actually just absolutely terrible and it's either just got to be removed or it's got to be really updated because it's just an embarrassment for your site okay that's that's not too common with my sites fortunately the other the other instance and this is far more common for me and that is is i have content that's pretty good but i can make it really good and when it's pretty good it's actually kind of performing okay but if i make it really good it stands a good chance to get a lot more traffic so with a little bit more effort or time or money i can actually move it say from top of page two for a good keyword right into the you know top spots on page one and in that instance it's well worth my time and money so how do i go about improving and updating older content well i've i've been doing this for some time now and i've updated a lot of content so i'm going to step you through the two main methods i do in this video i'm going to go into detail in each let's jump in before we get into the steps i take for the two methods on updating content let's quickly discuss improve versus update it's a minor distinction doesn't really matter kind of used interchangeably these days improve is making an article better updating is technically updating the content so that it's current so if there were dates or let's say products that no longer exist you would replace those products so that's really the difference really they're used interchangeably and i will use them interchangeably if uh, throughout this video and usually in my blog posts as well so I have two methods. The first I'm going to go through is the quick and dirty method. Uh, the second one is what I call the full workup. Okay, quick and dirty is probably what I do more often because it's pretty much hands off. It's fast. I can outsource it. I'm not really involved. Really what I'm doing here is, is I'm not doing a rewrite. I'm not doing a massive, massive reworking of the content. Basically, I'm improving the content by adding new sections. And the reason I do it in sections or chunks is because I can outsource the writing of each of those sections or those chunks. So what I do is I go into an article and I'll look for opportunities to add more subtopics and headings. And then basically what I'll do is I'll, I'll list them all out in uh, article instructions and I will then send them to the writer to fill those in. When they come back, I'll just copy and paste those different sections into the article. This works really well for listicles, but it works for regular articles as well and it can also work for product roundups. So basically what I do, like regular regular articles, I'll just you know identify some opportunities, chunks, throw them in, and call it an update. The listicles, it, two approaches. One is you can, if, if the entire list is bad and it's outdated, you may need to have the writer just redo an entire list. Or you could, I've done this quite a bit, because often the original list is still fairly relevant. I'll just say, hey, uh, can, you, can you research this topic? And if there's any, items in the list that you need to add to that that could be added to it then do it and do then do the write-up for each item in that list and so that's how i will update various listicles and, and essentially the same concept applies to product roundups you know you might have articles on the best gloves for xyz and so some of those may no longer be available and and there's better uh, better options that you should list so you just ask the writer what can you research and then look for better better gloves or better products that we could include in there tell me the ones that aren't available and where we can get rid of those okay so when i'm updating these listicle these product roundups i often won't actually delete the content i'll just create a section at the bottom of the article and say here is our initial list sorry some of the products aren't available but i'm keeping this information here as a reference point point. and that way if you're ranking because of any structure or writing within that original list in Google that I'm not going to lose that because I've completely changed the article and that that's one concern always that you need to keep in mind when you're updating and improving content and that is you, you know you may be ranking for a whole bunch of keywords but if you if you remove them from the article then you may lose those rankings so you want to be mindful of that so my practice is typically unless it's really really outdated or really badly written I won't delete much or any text at all I'll keep it in some fashion and I'm merely adding to the article now now, I say that with a caveat and that is going to go into part of the full workup method and that is if it is really badly written let's say back you know it was a few years ago and 
maybe you've learned to write much better or you didn't hire the best writers back then. You know, if you have to rewrite, rewrite. It, it, you know, I, I don't want lousy, lousy, bad writing on my uh, website. So, and that would be the exception to, you know, generally not removing any text. So let's go to the second method, and that is what I call the full workup. Now, this is this is a labor-intensive, time-consuming process. Often, I will do it. I will just, you know, it's a very important article, and I think it has a huge opportunity to rank for some really good keywords. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna give it my full attention. And in some cases, it'll be my full attention plus a writer. I'll get involved, and we're gonna really really work on this. So this is this is a type of article where you know maybe maybe you targeted a fairly long tail article. Uh, keyword and that's performing and then now you're noticing that you know it's been a year two maybe three and you're actually moving up the ranks for a very high search volume seed keyword and this can happen and, and the longer you build out your site the more that this will happen and it's happening uh, somewhat to me in the last couple of years and that's great because you can ultimately get tons of traffic to an article you, you never really intended to so when I see this happening what I'll do is like okay well the article definitely served that long tail nicely did a good job it's ranking well but I was like okay now I'm gonna rework this in a way so that I can also serve that C keyword that Google seems to like it for and this may require a massive amount of work so Basically, I'm swinging for the fences, going for the big keyword, and I'm going to kick it off with I'm going to improve the uh, introduction. Now, Neil Patel recently released a video in response to the July 2021 Google update, and he he suspects that a part of the, the rankings adjustments was Google's giving preference to websites where the introduction gets right to the point. If, the, if, the, if it's a question type of article or whatever the article topic is, the, the introduction addresses it. So anybody who would have searched the main keyword for that article landed there, they would get to know what they need to know right away. And I think there's a lot of merit to this. And I think, I think this is a good approach. Now, for years, I've been talking about really trying to write engaging, fun, interesting introductions. And I still believe in that because at the end of the day, we're serving, we're serving writers. But we can never forget about Google also. Right? It's this fine balancing act. So what you might, might want to do is, is you, you, you dedicate the first paragraph or two to just like uh, addressing the, the, the issue and getting right to the point. And then you could follow with your int interesting, engaging introduction. One website that does a really nice job with this is Business Insider. If you go there, you'll notice that they have a series of bolded bullet points right at the top of the article that addresses the very point of the article. You can almost get the entire gist of the article by reading that. And if you're interested to carry on, you carry on. So, um, you know, this is uh, Business Insider is no slouch in the traffic game one of the I think one of the best websites out there but also one of the uh, websites that gets absolute tons of traffic the other thing you want to do when you're doing the full workup is you want to rewrite the clumsy writing I've already addressed this and you know sometimes I get content back from from writers especially I'm trying new writers or adding new writers to the to the roster and it's just like, it drives me nuts it's just terrible and it's like I don't even know why you're holding yourself out as a freelance writer because it's atrocious and I'm certainly not the best writer in the world. In fact, I strive to find writers who outright me by, by miles. I love it when I, I get articles back. I'm like, wow, this is just amazing writing. I couldn't write this well even, no matter how hard I tried. So if it's bad writing, you got to rewrite it. You, you're going to do your website and your brand a huge disservice if you're going to have some old content that's just horribly written. Next up is you want to take a look at the images you're using. Now, chances are your images are fine, and that's fine. Remember, chances are a lot of the points I'm going through you don't have to do, but maybe one or two or three that you do need to do to approve. Now, images, maybe you didn't have the budget for many images, or you know, a few years ago there weren't that many stock image photo sites that were all that good, but now we've got a lot more selection. And perhaps, you know, just do a quick look through and see if there are opportunities to add some good images. Maybe you have an opportunity to add your own images, and that's ideal, and that's definitely worth the time. It's take your own photos, whatever the topics are, and it's relevant, and you put them in there. Related to images would be custom graphics. Now, this is where I put a lot of time and money into. I find that custom graphics and illustrations, if it works with the topic, uh, is a huge asset to any article because other websites will take it because it's really cool and they're going to then give me a source link and I get a lot of links that way but not only that they can be really uh, informative for readers and I'm not talking about a full infographic I don't do full infographics I'm, I'm not 
particularly keen on infographics. I think they were kind of cool when they first came out, but really I'm looking I'm looking at something that's really just a snapshot of something that's interesting, almost more uh, helpful. Like you know, if you're doing we're doing an article on on mountains, tallest mountains in the world. You could do some sort of uh, illustration that illustrates, you know, that compares all the mountains, the top 10 mountains in a row, and then you can have little lines that indicate the height and feet, and that's it. It's very simple. Even anyone who can uh, use a mouse in Canva could probably create simple illustrations, yet these are really cool. And, you know, if you're going to read an article about the 10 tallest mountains in the world, basically the thing that I would want to love to see is this really cool illustration showing the mountains in in relation and proper height to each other with their heights and it's like bang that's that's what I wanted to know so think about it that way you can add a lot of value to your content with graphics you don't need to hire a full-time uh, graphic designer or illustrator you can go to Fiverr and do one-offs and they're fairly reasonably priced and you can get some really cool illustrations out. the next up and this is fairly new in today's world of SEO and that is we need to really pay a lot of attention to our page speed scores that's the Google Insights uh, page speed scores but also GT metrics site speed load times and all of this stuff right this is all important this is now a ranking factor with Google officially not a huge one but it's definitely worth paying attention to so if you have this uh, article and if you're gonna spend the time fixing it up you might as well take a look and see if there are any uh, uh, features in the article like embeds or old short codes or something that's that's in there that's that's tampering at speed and you might replace that with some Gutenberg blocks now there are Gutenberg blocks for everything and so you can pretty much replace any sort of design elements let's say you're using some old uh, buttons for for uh, clicks to Amazon or something and it's it's based with a short code now maybe you can replace that with a Gutenberg block same with your table of contents switch it to a Gutenberg block I like the simple TOC free plugin for Gutenberg block table of contents so and then you know you definitely want to check your page speed scores uh, both maybe when, before you start the reworking and then again after and shoot to try to get that mobile into the 90 plus that's ideal and so I think this this definitely needs to be added as part of the reworking and improving process Carrying on with a full workup. Yeah, it is a full workup. There are a lot of opportunities usually with old content. And the next is you might want to explore removing the sidebar. I've been doing this a little bit. In fact, I have some uh, what I call skyscraper articles. I've been working with the niche website builders a little bit and, they, and they've been adding some to a particular site. And I think they're doing a really good job. I really like the articles they're putting there and they're getting some uh, via outreach some some links to the site so the content is really cool they come up with good ideas ideas that I wouldn't cover and so I'm, I'm very happy with it and so what I'm doing with these articles because we're doing spending time and money on outreach to get links is I will actually not put ads on these pages it's only a few pages on the site and I will get rid of the sidebar so basically it really is content centric and and I would you know, I'm very judicious about the content that I would remove sidebar and ads from, obviously, but and so you need to be too. But sometimes, you know, the pros and the benefits of, of getting rid of the monetization in the sidebar will outweigh. So consider that. And and I, I must say, you know, with Gutenberg it's fairly easy to, you know, not have this full width content that looks really bad. If you if you remove the sidebar, you can move in the margins and the padding and so that it's going to look really good. Do double check on both mobile and desktop when you when you make a change like that just to make sure it's going to look okay on all. CRO opportunities. Okay, this is conversion rate optimization. Now, if it's a purely informational article, this isn't relevant. But if you're doing even a little bit of some affiliate promotion uh, with products, links to Amazon or something, you might look at opportunities to improve that. And one thing I really like about Gutenberg is it makes it easy to create some pretty cool product feature boxes. You can insert columns, you can add buttons, you can add dividers, you can add tables, you can add a lot of stuff. It's not going to hamper the speed. You're not reliant on any sort of plugins or any short codes or anything like that. And you can create some really cool conversion rate um, features promoting various products right within Gutenberg and, and it's it's great and it's fairly easy to do so I would encourage you to do that as part of the improvement process if you're promoting products if you're not promoting products then you know obviously that doesn't apply next up you're moving along here you're getting a lot of uh, stuff added to the, the to the article and it's improving and you definitely at this point want to take the few minutes it takes to do a keyword analysis and injection what do I mean by the injection well basically I think you got to run your main keywords back through your various uh, keyword research tools the ones that I use extensively would be Ahrefs, answer Socrates 
uh, answer Socrates is free, keywordshader.com, which is free, and then Keyword Chef is the latest addition to my fleet of uh, keyword research tools. That's paid. Anyways, those are the four I'm using these days, and I'm just running keywords and, and topics through these over and over and over and over and looking for opportunities, and I might add, you know, like a 10-word long phrase in there, I might add some questions in there, and I'm getting opportunities by doing this to not only rank for more keywords, but also to add more content to it, because, uh, you know, sometimes you're not just going to add a keyword into an article, but it might be a whole section. So, when you're doing this reworking, it's definitely worth this little extra effort, because that could make it even a even better and get you more traffic. All right, let's talk quickly about the content en enhancers, as I call them, for the full workup. Okay, FAQ sections. Now, you can pepper questions throughout the article with answers behind them, or you can create a dedicated FAQ. It doesn't matter. I do both. It kind of depends on the article. But you definitely want to add some questions in there because this is really going to help. Now, what I've been doing is is I'm kind of doing a hybrid or a hedge when it comes to FAQ. When I when I stumble on a, a question that's a really pertinent question, but it's also deserving of its of its own post. Like it's it's it can be a, it can be simply answered, and I'll put it in the in into the larger article. But if it could use its own article, I'll actually do a full write up on it, and then I'll link from the FAQ section of one article and say if you're interested in this question, there's a lot more information here than link to that. And so I've been starting to do that. Uh, it's probably too early. To, tell for results but I have a suspicion that this is a really good way to go about it and just adding really really long tail detailed in-depth content to my website so that's a good opportunity I certainly don't do that for every FAQ and don't forget to add your schema markup to your FAQ that's going to help you get more listings in Google search with the uh, people also ask uh, aspects in the search results and I can get more traffic for it Next up as a content enhancer would be data, facts, and stats. Okay, very simple stuff. You can always add some facts and data and statistics to your content, whether it be in the intro, whether it be in a full, full size chart or table, whether it be weaved in throughout. These are interesting info, dense, rich, fun, helpful, useful, little snippets of information. I always encourage my writers to look for this stuff and add it to my articles. And lastly, another easy content enhancer would be quotes. If there are experts or professionals in your, in your niche, you could go and watch some videos where they're being interviewed perhaps and pull out a quote. Obviously, you want to give a references. Okay, always source everything when you're doing this stuff. And it's the same with any other maybe written quotes and articles. And then there's personal anecdotes that you can add from your own life and experiences into these articles if it's relevant. I like doing that. I have fun writing it. Don't get too personal. You don't want to like divulge everything. That's not what you're doing. You just kind of want to have fun and give fun some fun examples. Moving on to the full workup, we also want to do interlinking. Okay, don't forget, this is another opportunity to improve your interlinking, and often there's a room for improvement, unless you've been very diligent uh, since day one, and I can say that I haven't. So, usually when I'm going back to older content, uh, there are opportunities to link to a lot of new content I've since published back to this article, especially if it's going to be um, like a high search article. I want to give it as much opportunity as I can with inbound links from other pages on my site, and then there will be opportunities to link out to other pages. And one other thing I'll consider, if it's going to become a very important article and potentially a really high traffic article, I may actually add to it, add it to the home page as a link from the home page telling Google that like, this is this is now a very important article on my site. I referenced referencing, I th it's important. I like to do my references in the content, so I'll hyperlink the text that it's relevant to to the external site. You can do the end notes, you can follow a style guide. I just prefer in content. I know that's not up to the style guide methods, but you know, the style guide was back when print was the dominant way that we consumed information. Uh, or at least the written word and now it's the web and I just think from a user standpoint linking right where that that reference is or a piece of information that needs to be referenced I just think that that's better for user experience and lastly we're talking about content optimization once you've done all of this work and you're happy with the new workup run it through a content optimizer like market Muse or surfer SEO and just see if there are any things that you're missing or little tweaks that you should add or make it better and you can do it now content optimizers are not going to be any sort of guarantee you're going to rank number one that's not what they're designed for i view them as just another another part of the process to help give me just a little bit more advantage and i think uh, in the aggregate as i use it for all my content and i do use it for all my content that it uh, will overall help but it's sure not a sure thing uh, well that's the list that's a lot all right the quick and dirty is is a really good method and 
you know, really reserve the, the big full workup when there are opportunities that, you know, you think you, know, you put five hours into, into a rewrite and a reworking. Uh, it, you want it to stand a good chance of really being a big hit. So thanks for watching. Appreciate it. You can read a lot more all about content production and blogs and niche website publishing and all that stuff at fatsacksblog.com.